next is brakes. I have uh, new hoses, new brake cables, shifter boot, there's the original uh, cylinder reservoir. I have new rear uh, wheel cylinder hardware, new drums, some other brake hardware there. And right now with the wiring out I have, and the gas tank out, I have access to the master cylinder uh, down there. I have the steel lines there and I can plumb in some better rubber hoses there, put the master cylinder in up there. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this while the wiring is a mess is my brake lights are stuck on and I think the switch down on the master cylinder is engaging because basically the, the brakes are failing because they're leaking and there's no fluid in the system. So I have to basically do some repair work and while I'm in there I'm going to upgrade all these other little bits and doodads so that uh, I have a nice firm brake pedal. The master cylinder is not uh, signaling that there is a brake failure or that the brakes are on. So here's hoping that it goes as easily as I just explained it. Remove the cotter pin. So now it's just a matter of uh, this is a 36 mil axle nut, impact socket. Heat did not work, so it's time to uh, destroy the axle nut to remove it. I think it might be starting to move.
See the grease? Big jaws, little jaws. Not sure if that's supposed to be like that. That's the emergency brake cable. So I've got to pop that off now. Need to get a few more tools. Okay, on the back side for the wheel cylinder is a 13 mil nut. You will need an extension. And the uh, brake line, for me at least, going into the back of the wheel cylinder is 11 mil. Top tip. Crack the brake line loose before you crack the cylinder itself loose. Keeps it from rotating, I guess. couple dismantling tips. First, keep the screw that holds the wheel cylinder on, on. So that way it doesn't rock when you try to break the brake line loose. My brake line was held on with an 11 mil wrench. In order to get an 11 mil wrench on that and actually rotate, I needed to remove the bleeder screw that sits up top there. And for that, I used a 930 seconds. Not sure what that is in metric. So, old wheel cylinder removed. I'm gonna have to clean this thing up now. I'm not gonna film that, uh, and then I will bring you guys back when it is clean and ready to put on new wheel cylinder and new brake hardware and brake shoes. So all cleaned up. I have the new wheel cylinder here. And uh, now I just got to slide it in there. I also transferred over to the new shoe this lever which is connected to this cable here right like that so that when you pull the emergency brake on that will uh, pull on that cable and then push the shoe out against the drum so that's all good to go this is the other side and I have my little uh, hardware kit.
forgot that I bought the uh, axle seal kit. So I'm going to break this down real quick and uh, install that. Get on there. Fail. The walls are too fat. Won't fit around that. Okay, you're not supposed to use non impact with an impact socket, but, or with an impact driver. But, uh, I'm gonna make an exception here because I have a hard time imagining these things are on there with 200 foot-pounds. Yeah, they're not. New seal on, put a little bit of grease around the lip, hammer it in very gently with a wood block. This rides in there, around that. So I got the uh, new shoes on, new cylinder, new springs, new seal, uh, pack the grease back there, and then one thing to note when you buy the spring kits they come with multiple pins here that are varying lengths so you want to make sure you're using the right one I was trying to get a shorter one in here and it was not working so anyway that's looking pretty cleaned up and pretty good now I just gotta clean that cruddy mess there and I can put the drum back on. I will reinstall the damaged axle nut for the moment. I have new ones on order and uh, I'm not driving with this thing. I can always uh, pop that nut off and then uh, replace it in, uh, when the next one comes. So, Well that's a pretty clean brake drum so I am going to install that sucker so I'm going to put you on the stand for that. Just when you think you're done, you find a piece that you'd put the manual on top of. Feels right in there. Gotta pull that. Gotta pull that.
<laughs> Did you see where the spring went? Me neither. Found it. Bounced off my forehead and rolled that way. Let's try this again. Okay. Now just again to show you what I did. Drill three holes, pop through in the back. Just broke some of that tension. Had to get it off at some point. No cotter pin for now. Uh, I do have it. I'm just not going to put it on yet because uh, put the tire back on, new nut shows up, pop that nut off, pop the new one on, all will be good. So in my brake overhaul I needed to replace a what I thought was a frayed cable and upon removal I noticed that. I don't think that uh, reaches all the way back to the rear drum. So uh, I've got to yank the rest of that. So let's show you where that is. So this is the other end of it here. Underneath here, runs up to there and into the body. Uh, I do have a replacement, so I am going to uh, get cracking on that and then I'll show you uh, as I go along what I got done. So that gold thing way deep down in there is the end of my new cable. I have fed it through so that just that little bit is there. So now what I need to do is pull it up. Got it out. Uh, found out the uh, gooseneck pliers were not ideal for getting it out of that hole. So what I did, let's see if I can show you here. Got some safety wire on a loop fed it in, looped it around the end here, and then just started twisting it so it got tighter and tighter until eventually it actually just grabbed, so you can see there I'm trying to pull it, grabs the threads, and I was able to pull it up and out. So I'm calling that a win. Obviously this one and this one are not balanced. I'm gonna have to figure out this one. It seems like it's actually short, you know, but you'd think it would have stretched by now, so why is this one longer? This one's obviously the correct uh, one for the model year. So if I have to, I will have to uh, replace this one as well. But now that I know how to do it, it won't be that hard. Let me show you the back end and uh, walk you through a little bit of that. So up in there is where it's just a press fit. Just shove it in there, holds it tight. It then loops down, and then that metal end there curves under and over here. You pull it through. This is a little hard to do one-handed. Oh, I'm gonna set you guys down.
Call that good. So the right rear is done. New cylinder, spring, spring, clips, shoes. Uh, the emergency brake cable attaches to this lever here. You see how it, it pulls this way, which will uh, put some pressure outward up here and outward up there. Basically like what that does. And uh, the only damage trying to get that axle on off, I'm not sure if you can see, there's a little nick in the threads right there. But I'm okay with that. Um, not down into the axle much at all, and so it's not going to have weakened it. The uh, torque is applied to the splines, not the threads. So it should work just fine. So now i got to put the drum on, which is over there, and clean. And then I got a new axle nut from uh, J-Bugs. Six bucks. Best deal on the net. So I'm in the process of uh, replacing the left rear brake cable. I already did the right one. Um, and I just felt like, you know, left one was a little stretched. I couldn't get the two to balance at the uh, pull lever. So I'm going to pull it. $13.95, you know, ain't worth being cheap on it. So pull that one. How I pull it. You remove it from the parking brake lever area. Basically, pull that nut off and then you got to shove it down underneath and then you pull it out the back end right here when you do that see these tabs in here you got to bend them back so by bending these tabs back what that allows you to do is basically pull the hammer this end right here out that way and then you take the end here that attaches to the drums, uh, that attaches to the shoe, and you just feed it out that hole. Everything basically dumps out into this area from behind. You don't pull it this way because it ain't going to work. Now I'm going to slide the other one in and uh, proceed. One thing you have to make sure you note. These tabs have to be hammered out of the way. It was a little bit of a bite with the drum shoe in place. So if you are replacing your shoes and you think you might want to replace the parking brake cable, uh, do the cable while the shoes are off. You just get a better angle this way to hammer at those two teeth. They're a pretty firm but or thick but soft metal. And so what that does is I think it's just it's designed to let you bend it out of the way, feed it out, and then close it back up. I cannot imagine or figure out another way to do it. So that's the way I did it. I already did it on the right. It worked. So now I'm going to do it on the left. So one of the things they advise you do is grease up the cable itself. You want to get it a good coat. So I've got the grease gun not using axle grease I'm using you know this is what I'd use to lube a drive shaft on one of the Jeeps where it can be exposed to water a little bit more directly and all we're trying to do is make sure that there's no binding This will, of course, encourage other things to stick to it, but take the good with the bad. The nice thing is that when I uh, ran the other one through, it came out coated in grease. So that tube in the chassis down through the center tunnel has plenty of lube in it. I just want to make sure that this thing starts off on its journey fully coated. Okay. Messy.
you do not want to shove it all the way in and then hook it up here. If you do that, the end that attaches to the parking brake slides underneath the parking brake and actually goes closer to the shifter base, um, which you don't want. You need to be able to access it. So I'm going to go and do that. Okay, I fed the uh, cable up to the handbrake. Now I'm ready to pull this in. And uh, to get this cable sleeve behind to seat, just a screwdriver, hammer, light touches, and it goes in. Good. New rubber brake hose installed. Remember to pull that clip off and use two wrenches. So on the brake hard line, you need to use an 11 mil on the uh, female end. On the other side of it, you need to use a 17 mil and up there is a 14 mil. That one did not want to crack off. So one of the things I did was make sure that underneath this bracket here, I, uh, let's see if I can show you that. The bracket where the block is, the metering block, I uh, put a little piece of, uh, what do you call it, oak underneath that so that as I was cranking, I was not going to be bending that down. So, just a suggestion. Quick peek at uh, <laughs> the hose that I had uh, in the back right here. Your brake hoses look like that. You need to change them. No bueno. All right, all done. Master cylinder is in. That is a cloth braided seven mil inside diameter brake hose. It is not fuel line. That's what I had on there initially, but uh, that was just to see if the master cylinder was going to work and the, get the brakes going. Eventually, brake fluid will dissolve that gunk. And then uh, clamps, new lines down to the master cylinder. Still got to check the wiring on that, but we are wrapped up. So, brakes are done, and I'm ready to move on to finally finishing up the mess of wiring. So, uh, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it. Uh, give me a thumbs up, a like, and uh, leave a comment if there's some suggestions or ideas on what I could have done differently or what the guys looking at this could maybe do for their own project to do it better. Uh, put it in there. See you guys.